There's nothing wrong with my little daughter. I'm sorry we have to meet under these circumstances, Mr. Fenix, but it's an absolute must that we talk about Abigail. I looked down at my watch and let out a sigh. Mrs. Johnson, this is probably a misunderstanding. No, Mr. Fenix. Just call me Adam, I asserted. Mr. Fenix, your daughter... She pulls out a stack of paper and pushes it towards me. Has been drawing these in class. I pick one up and look at it. This is a drawing of a dragon. What's wrong with that? I pick up another drawing. This one is of a butterfly with razor-sharp wings. She loves comic books. I don't see why... The counselor interrupts. Keep looking. I go through about a dozen more drawings and found one of a little girl holding a decapitated head. I look over at my daughter, her eyes fixated on the floor. Abigail. She looks up. Yes, Daddy? What's this about? It's about a dream I had. There was a man who wanted to kidnap me, and so I killed him. Mrs. Johnson tenses up. How come you were dreaming about such a thing? I asked. Mrs. Roberts was talking about stranger danger in class that day, said Abigail. Oh, it totally makes sense now in my head. My daughter had a day filled with talks about creepy people, and so naturally she's going to have a dream about it. Mrs. Johnson, my daughter is bright and creative. She wants to be an artist. Mrs. Johnson is very stern. Keep looking, she repeats. I reach over and grab the rest of the stack. As I look through them, the drawings become more and more sinister. There's a drawing of a boy with a gun and dead kids all around him. Another drawing is that of the word, kill, 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 written repeatedly on a chalkboard. Another one shows a cat hanging from a tree. Yet another is of a mother putting her children in the dryer. Now you see, Mr. Fenix, why we have to talk about Abigail, said the counselor. I put down the stack of drawings and asked the counselor if I could have a moment with my daughter. The counselor obliges and leaves the office. Abigail, talk to me, honey. Daddy, it's not me. He wants me to draw those things. He? Who's he? He's scary. He stands behind me in class and tells me to draw these things. Abigail, listen to Daddy. I want you to look me in the eyes and tell me you're not lying to me. Daddy, I'm not lying to you. He... Abigail, listen. Your teacher is very concerned about these drawings. Mrs. Johnson is the school counselor. She is very concerned about these drawings. You're not listening to me. I didn't draw these because I wanted to. The scary man who stands behind me in class is making me draw these things. My daughter's eyes started to well up. What man? How can a man just walk into a classroom and nobody notices him? I don't know. Abigail, this is my final warning to you. I don't want to hear any more lies coming out of you again. Abigail stays quiet. She pouts and looks the other way, her arms folded. No more comic books. No more video games. No more anything. You're getting out of hand with your imagination, I told her. That's not fair! She yells. I was going to say something else to her, but I stopped myself. I collected myself. What should a good father do? A good father listens, I thought to myself. My precious daughter is all I have. Abigail, about this man that stands behind you in class, what does he look like? He's very pale and his fingers are long. I don't like looking at him. He's got a hundred ugly teeth. He's a scary man. Did this man hurt you in any way? No, he just stands there. Sometimes he points with his long fingers at my drawings to let me know I'm doing a good job. Does any of the other kids see him as well? No, he only comes to me. Mrs. Roberts just lets him in the class? Mrs. Roberts doesn't care. 
Why not? Because Mrs. Roberts, like you, called me a liar when I tried to tell her. I leaned back in my chair, perplexed. Why is my daughter saying these things? I motioned for Mrs. Johnson to come back inside. Would you mind letting me in on this little discussion? She asked. Mrs. Johnson, I know this may sound crazy, but my daughter is telling me that there is a creepy man that comes in the classroom and stands behind her and forces her to draw these morbid drawings. A man? How is that possible? The whole school would have been surrounded if a... Yes, I know, but she's very adamant about it. There's nothing wrong with my little daughter. I think I believe her. Mrs. Johnson pauses and gives me a look. She's not biting. The counselor gets up from her chair and motions for me and my daughter to follow. In the hallway, she pulled me aside and spoke softly under her breath. Mrs. Roberts is still in her classroom going over some papers. I suggest you go see her and sort this out. I don't know what else I can do. If anything should arise and you have any concerns or questions, you can always call me. Even during off hours, I'm here for you and Abigail. I thanked her and off we went towards room number 22. Mrs. Roberts is a portly woman. I know I shouldn't point out her size like that, but I think that's part of her charm. Very motherly always full of sunshine. I peek my head inside the classroom. Mrs. Roberts is at her desk with her head down low squinting at some paper. Hello, Mrs. Roberts, I said. She looks up and instantly flashes a giant heartwarming smile. Mr. Fanix, what brings you here this late? How's Abigail doing? Abigail tucks away behind my back. She's refusing to look inside the classroom. Mrs. Roberts suddenly remembers why I'm visiting her. On the walls were a bunch of drawings by the other children. Mrs. Roberts' bright smile quickly disappears. She motioned for me to come inside. Abigail is a wonderful girl, lovely student. She's also quite the artist, but it's the subject matter I'm a little wary of. She points to a drawing on the wall made by my Abigail. I couldn't bring myself to take it down because I didn't want to hurt her feelings. Take a look for yourself. She points towards Abigail's drawing tacked up between a drawing of a rainbow with cats underneath it and a unicorn shooting stars out of its mouth. Her drawing was of a pale man with long fingers. His eyes were tiny, black, and round, his abnormally large mouth agape with hundreds of pointed teeth protruding from within it. Below him sits a little girl at her desk, with her head buried in her arms. There is a word balloon, and inside it reads, Shh, it's going to be alright, Abigail. Abigail says this man in the drawing stands behind her in class and forces her to draw these horrendous things, I said without turning to look at Mrs. Roberts. What do you make of it? Mr. Fenix, I'm sure this is just a phase and it's easily fixable. You, as a father, knows what's best for her. Kids are brutally honest, but also very vulnerable to their surroundings. A day's worth of playing video games could trigger these nightmares. Abigail, who is milling about outside the classroom, suddenly walks in and goes to her desk as if by command. She pulls out a piece of paper and pencil and starts doodling. Mrs. Roberts looks over at her. She nods at me. Let's just let her have her way with it, and we'll see what she comes up with this time. Abigail then began furiously sketching away at the paper. She was gripping the pencil with her hand and drawing in circles. Honey, stop that. You're going to hurt yourself. Abigail continued to violently draw in circles, her arms moving against her will. She can't stop. Something prevents me from going towards her. I feel as if I was shackled in place, paralyzed, helpless. Her pencil snaps in two and she breaks out of her trance. Honey, are you all right? I yelled out. She looks up at me with her eyes full of terror. He's standing right behind me, Daddy.